New World Order, Mr. Rothschild. Right. New World Order. Depopulation. Oh, listen, who, who are you... Genocide. Who are you televising for? With British Prime Minister Lloyd George up against a wall, Lionel Rothschild and the Jewish Zionists offered the British a deal they couldn't refuse. We'll bring the United States into the war as your ally and win the war for you, they said, if you'll promise us Palestine. In April of 1917, President Wilson got the green light and declared war on Germany. In return, the British government wrote the famous Balfour Declaration and addressed it to none other than Lord Lionel Rothschild. The declaration promised Palestine and Israel to the Rothschild Zionists. In 1917, Lord Allenby conquered the Holy Land, and the Jews were promised a national home in Palestine by the Earl of Balfour, a policy endorsed by Woodrow Wilson and by the League of Nations, which made Palestine a British mandate. According to author Simon Shama, the Rothschilds own 80% of the land of Israel. Even the flag of Israel flies the hexagram symbol from the Rothschild family's red shield. The Rothschilds bought Reuters in the 1800s. Reuters then bought the Associated Press, which selects and delivers the same news stories to the entire world, day after day. They have controlling interest in three major television networks and easily avoid media attention since they own it. Until recently, they owned and operated England's Royal Mint and continue to be the gold agent for the Bank of England, which they also direct. They also fix the world price of gold on a daily basis and profit from its ups and downs. Over the centuries, the Rothschilds have amassed trillions of dollars worth of gold bullion in their subterranean vaults and have cornered the world's gold supply. They own controlling interest in the world's largest oil company, Royal Dutch Shell. They operate phony charities and offshore banking services where the wealth of the black nobility in the Vatican is hidden in secret accounts at Rothschild Swiss banks, trusts, and holding companies. Although Evelyn Rothschild looks like a harmless gray-haired old man, make no mistake about it, Rothschild and his ancestors have hand-picked presidents, crashed stock markets, bankrupted nations, orchestrated wars, and sponsored the mass murder and impoverishment of millions. That is something that the people in the United States have never been told. They never knew why we went into World War I. The Balfour Declaration was merely Great Britain's promise to pay the Zionists what they had agreed upon as a consideration for getting the United States into the war. When the war was ended and the Germans went to Paris, to the Paris Peace Conference in 1919, when they were cutting up Germany and parceling out Europe to all these nations that claimed a right to a certain part of European territory, the Jews said, how about Palestine for us? And they produced, for the first time, to the knowledge of Germans, this Balfour Declaration. So the Germans, for the first time, realized Oh, that was the game. That's why the United States came into the war. And the Germans, for the first time, realized that they were defeated. They suffered this terrific reparation that was collapsed onto them because the Zionists wanted Palestine. And they were determined to get it at any cost. When the Germans realized this, they naturally resented it. Up to that time, the Jews had never been better off in any country in the world than they had been in Germany. The Jews were doing very well in Germany. No question about that. Now, the Germans felt, well, that was quite a sellout. We've been so nice to them, and from 1905 on, when the first communist revolution in Russia failed, and the Jews had to scramble out of Russia, they all went to Germany. And Germany gave them refuge. And they were treated very nicely. And here, they sold Germany down the river for no reason at all, other than they wanted Palestine 